Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Radolescence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it and I hope this video finds you well and I hope you're keeping safe and healthy. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at a classic fragrance. This one by the company Versace is called Versace Lum. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my fragrance review of Versace Lum, a classic fragrance, and I'm sure a lot of people out there have tried this fragrance and probably even own it, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, if you like fragrance reviews just like this, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and pretty much anything having to do with fragrances, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. That all I'm going to ask. It's free. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, also please be sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. So Versace Lum. This is a fragrance dating back to 1986. I wasn't even born at the time. And this is a classic fragrance in the men's arena. You know that with a lot of the fragrances that came out in the late 70s, early 90s, they had a lot of these verdant and green notes. So you have the oak moss you have fur, you have pine, you have balsamic ingredients, you have that earthy richness that is utilized in the base of so many of these fragrances, patchouli being another ingredient. And in this fragrance in particular, we do see the emergence of a lot of these ingredients. We see the oak moss, we see the patchouli. There's something in here that's kind of minty as well. I think it's because of the basil. Initially, I thought it was mint or geranium or something like that. And also carnation is a floral ingredient that is quite common in fragrances that came out right around this time period. But certainly, if you are a fan of Versace, chances are you purchased this fragrance when it first came out. Now, of course, our attention is invariably fixed on fragrances like Versace Eros and Versace Mano Fresh and countless other fragrances from the brand that they have released within the past decade or so. But here we have a fragrance that is 34 years old. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance, but let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. So I do apologize for not having the box for this fragrance. I actually ended up purchasing a tester online. It was the best price that I could find. But here's the bottle and you have this black cap. It's not really a cap because it has a built-in atomizer. It just says Versace Lum here on the front. I really love this feel on the bottle here. It's textured and it has a really nice design. There is a sticker on the bottom uh, with your batch code and all of your information. And the distribution on the atomizer is very wide. Let's continue with the smell. Wow. Now let me just go ahead and say right off the bat, this is a blast from the past. <laughs> as soon as you smell this fragrance, you will immediately be reminded of these very sort of macho masculine fragrances from the late 70s and 80s. And you know, all throughout the 80s, of course, this came out in 86 towards the latter half of the decade, you will be reminded of the sort of macho green fragrances that utilize a lot of these green earthy ingredients. Now, in the case of this fragrance in particular, you are going to get a lot of oak moss. So oak moss is definitely the dominating ingredient in here. And I'm sure when the fragrance first came out, they were using real oak moss. Now, of course, oak moss has been banned by uh, the International Fragrance Association because it contains two compounds known as atronol and chloroatronol, which 2% of the European population is allergic to. So in order for them to sort of ameliorate or remedy that situation, uh, they just sort of banned the ingredient altogether. And of course, oak moss is a base note because it is comprised of a higher, higher molecular structure. And so it's one of these ingredients that will help prolong the duration or the longevity of the fragrance. Unfortunately, uh, with more current formulations of many fragrances, and I'm not speaking to Versace Lum specifically, but in the case of many fragrances that utilize oak moss, uh, they have undergone a some sort of a formula, a reformulation, excuse me. And I'm sure it's no different in the case of Versace Lum, but there's still something about this fragrance when you smell it, it captures that old world feel and that old world olfactory aesthetic. Now it's very bright and vivacious in the opening. And I think that that brightness is lent to the fragrance 
through the use of notes like lemon and carnation. And also this note of basil, which I think has a very unique role in this perfume. So it opens up very citrusy, very lemony, and lemon is without a doubt the dominating citrus note here. You know, a lot of times in many fragrances, when it comes to the use of citrus ingredients, whether it be lemon or bergamot or orange or clementine or whatever, tangerine, uh, it's really hard to pinpoint what particular citrus ingredient is being used. In the case of this fragrance, it is unquestionably lemon. There's a certain acidic quality in the opening, the certain tartness that I think is really made possible through the use of lemon. And it's a very vivid lemon that you're going to get in the opening. Not something like uh, Mustache by Rojas Man, which came out in the 40s, late 40s, if I'm not mistaken. That was the Eau de Toilette. That one is a really natural smelling lemon, kind of powdery, barbershoppy. In the case of this one, you also have that barbershop element, but then you also have that weightiness in the base that would also uh, classify this fragrance as a sheep bra. So you have the green earthy elements in the base, the sandalwood, you know, sandalwood is also an ingredient in this fragrance, I should say, and uh, rose is an ingredient. If you go on Fragrantica, as a matter of fact, I think they list like 100 million ingredients, of course, hyperbole, but they do have a lot of ingredients on Fragrantica. And so for this fragrance in particular, I really had to rely on my own nose's guidance and being able to determine what I'm smelling exactly. And it's really more of that earthiness and the oak moss that I think is so pervasive in fragrances that came out right around this time period. Of course, um, I should also mention that this fragrance has a leather accord. Now, perhaps there is some sort of an animalic component in here used very, very tastefully. Nothing like this fragrance right here, Lapidus Porum. This one is a very sort of um, civet heavy fragrance. I don't know if it's listed as a note, but I know I've reviewed that one. That one has a tendency of being very animalic. And then here I have another one that contains Castorium Antaeus by Chanel. Another fantastic fragrance, uh, very classy and elegant and like classically modern, you know, uh, where it can still be pulled off today, but it kind of gives hints and allusions to, you know, previous decades. In the case of this fragrance, I think that it's that bright, open, slightly minty, but lemony quality that really modernizes the composition. However, I still do find that there is a significant presence of that oak moss in here that will still remind a lot of people of decades past. But once you get past that, there is this smooth, leathery thing going on in the base, a little spicy at times as well. I know cinnamon is listed as a note. I do get accents of cinnamon, but it doesn't smell overly autumnal. It's not evocative of pumpkin spice or anything like that. So it's not overly spicy, but I can see how some of those spicy ingredients might contribute to the synthesis of that uh, leather accord. But overall, the strongest ingredients that you're going to get in this fragrance are the lemon, the oak moss, and certainly this basil quality that opens up very minty and very bright and very energetic at the same time. But this is a modern fragrance if I ever smelled one. It's a classic fragrance and I'm also curious, you know, if you're watching at home and you have experience with Versace Lum, please go ahead and leave your comment down below. I'm always interested in reading what sort of experiences my subscribers have had with various fragrances. And this one in particular, uh, truth be told, is one that I purchased this year in 2020. I actually purchased this during the quarantine. You know, I was home you know, uh, I wanted to expand my knowledge of a lot of more classic fragrances and I did a, um, a fragrance X haul. I think I purchased like 50 bottles or something like that. And this is one of them because it's so affordable. So I said, eh, just throw it in the cart. And when it arrived, I must say, I was very surprised by the quality, the lasting power. And despite the fact that the fragrance is 34 years old, it still performs very well. I don't wanna jump the gun, but those are my thoughts on the smell. It is a fragrance that is going to be evocative of decades past, but it's still built in a resolute type of a way. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, uh, I'm sure that for its time, this was a very unique fragrance. I do feel like in many ways, this is a fragrance that is still stuck in the 80s and will still give off 80s vibes. However, if you are wearing or purchasing this fragrance for nostalgia reasons, by all means, please continue to wear this fragrance and do go ahead and pick it up.
up because yes, it can still be found for a very reasonable and very affordable price online, which is where I picked it up. I think I picked it up from Fragrance X one day I was doing a haul and this was one of the fragrances that I uh, <laughs> kind of on the last minute, I threw it into the cart and I'm really happy I did because I'm so happy to have this in my collection. Definitely a classic worth picking up in my opinion, especially if you're a fan of these types of fragrances. In terms of the longevity for this fragrance, you can expect about eight hours on your skin. So this one, despite the fact that it's eau de toilette concentration, it's been around for a long time and I'm sure it has undergone a few reformulations. It still performs very, very well. Projection on this one is also very good. It radiates within an arm's length for the first two hours of application. It didn't start to sit closer to the skin until that six hour mark. So just know that you are going to be noticed when you wear this fragrance, especially because it is comprised of a lot of base heavy ingredients. And so it's really these ingredients that linger and, you know, stick to your skin and carry out throughout the course of the perfume and its development on your skin. In terms of the versatility, I do find that this is one better suited for a formal occasion. So if you're going to wear this one dressed up, fantastic. I think this one can also be worn casually just because of that price factor, but there's something about the carnation, the basil, the oak moss, the leather, the lemon, that really sort of conveys a dressed up suit and tie kind of a feel. But I have a tendency of making that association with a lot of green fragrances. So at the end of the day, you be the judge. I think this is a perfect fragrance to wear now that it's getting kind of cold outside just because it's a very enduring composition and very resolute, like I said before. And I do think it's masculine. <laughs> it contains a lot of classically masculine ingredients. So, but again, if you're a woman and you like wearing fragrances like these, the Macho Man Disco, you know, uh, open buttons on the uh, shirt, sort of big thick gold chain types of fragrances, check it out. You might actually really enjoy it. Uh, and lastly, the presentation, pretty cool presentation. I love the atomizer on this thing. I'm gonna use it one more time. Really, really wide distribution. So my final verdict on this fragrance is, I enjoyed this fragrance for what it is. I'm sure at the time it was a classic, it was a hit, it did really, really well. I'm sure a lot of you watching at home probably have this one in your collection as well. I do think that it takes a few hits because it's not modern per se and you know, Perhaps it is a little bit stuck in the 80s and it's evocative of older decades, but there is still something about the scent to love and appreciate and admire and to reapply for um, or to continue to wear even today in 2020 for nostalgia reasons. So by all means, if you are a fan of this smell, if you like this fragrance, please continue to wear it with enthusiasm. Don't let anybody discourage you from doing so. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Versace Lum by Versace. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future videos. And of course, that includes fragrance reviews just like this, but also top tens, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.